Hi everybody, thanks for checking into another math video. Um, and this one is going to be about solving quadratic equations by something called the zero product property. All right, very, very important and useful and simple uh, mathematical principle. Um, so we'll use that in this, uh, in this video a bunch of times. Oh yeah, and we're also going to solve uh, quadratics, uh, quadratic equations by factoring. All right, um, let's talk first about the zero product property. The zero product property is a mathematical property that you could say that says something I hope seems fairly obvious at first. It says that if the product of two numbers is zero, then at least one of those two numbers must also be zero. All right, that's all it says. And uh, so, in other words, the product of two numbers, that is, you take two numbers and you multiply them together, and the answer, the product, is zero. That must mean that at least one of those numbers must also be zero. Here's like a simple example. If three times x equals zero, well, then x has to be zero, all right? There's just no other possible solution for x. Um, and those, that 3x is a product of two numbers, right? 3 times x, all right? Or here's something, another one, 17a equals 0, then a equals 0, okay? Um, also, if a times b equals 0, then that means a equals 0 or b equals 0, because sometimes we don't know either one of the numbers, all right? And so we're going to use this zero product property to solve quadratic equations a whole bunch of times, all right? Uh, let me be give you some other examples here of the zero product property first. Um, uh, these examples will be a little bit more relevant to our practice, okay? Um, and so something like this, if x times x plus 2 equals zero, well, that must mean that x equals zero or x plus 2 equals zero. That's just what the zero product property says. All right, here's another one. If x minus 5 times x plus 2 equals zero, then x minus 5 equals zero or x plus 2 equals zero. All right, and so both of these here, now we're going to start using a different word. Um, these are factors, right? x times x plus 2 or x minus 5 times x plus 2. Those are factors, right? When you multiply things together, we call those things factors. Here's another example. If 2x times 3x minus 4 equals 0, then 2x equals 0 or 3x minus four equals zero. Folks, those are all factors, all right? So um, we're going to start using that term here also because it's rel related to factoring, which we're going to do pretty soon also in this video, but we, and we've been doing that a lot in class, right? Factoring things. Um, and so these examples that I'm showing you here are relevant to our practice because this uh, says that um, the zero product property says if two numbers, uh, if the product of two numbers is zero, then at least one of the numbers must be zero. But that also applies, as we can see here, to factors or algebraic expressions like 2x or 3x minus 4. Those are factors. So if the product of two factors equals zero, then at least one of those factors must be zero. And perhaps both of them are zero. All right? So that's how we use the zero product property to solve quadratic equations. All right? But let's just try solving some basic ones first. Um, and, and one of the things that you're going to see is that almost every single time, almost I should say, but not so almost every time you solve a quadratic equation, we're going to have that equation set equal to zero. If it's not already set to zero, then that might be your very first step in solving it, is to set it equal to zero and do what you have to do to do that. All right, but let's say we've got something like that. These equations at first, uh, I'm going to give you five examples, and all of these examples are going to be in factored form. All right, so factored form means the equation is written as a product of two factors, okay, like x times x plus 4. Well, there it, there it is. There's our two factors, right? Um, and so you're going to set each one of those factors equal to 0, and right away we get one solution, x equals 0. When you get x equals a number, then that's a solution, right? And so but the other one's pretty simple. Just subtract 4 from both sides, and there are our factors. I mean, sorry, there are our solutions to that equation, all right? And yes, it's true that quadratic equations always have two solutions, all right? And there's a little asterisk there by the word always, and that is because sometimes both of the solutions are the same number. And that seems like, well, maybe then there's only one solution. Yes, but not really. No, really, there are two solutions. Uh, they both happen to be the same number, 
that's just once in a while. To kind of throw that in there just to be mathematically honest with you. Let's continue and do another example. To x minus 2 times x plus, plus 5 equals 0. Okay, you've seen expressions like that, you factor, you come up with things like that many times, um, but it's very easy to solve. Just set your factors equal to zero and solve. It's pretty simple, all right? Uh, let's do another one. 4x times x minus 25 equals zero. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there are your factors, all right? And you set each factor equal to zero. Well, you know, there's four times x. Those are also factors, right? And so that means x equals zero and x equals 25. And there are your solutions, okay? The zero product property is great. Here's another one. 2x, this is one we, we saw before. 2x times 3x minus 4 is zero. Set each factor equal to zero and solve the little equations. Um, Notice that in this one here, and that's one of the reasons this example is here for you, is that it's not just the opposite of the number like you've seen in examples 1, 2, and 3. Uh, example number 4 here shows a factor, 3x minus 4, and when you set that factor equal to 0 and solve that little equation, 3x minus 4 equals 0, you get 4 thirds, all right? It's not just 4, it's 4 thirds. All right, let's try another one here. Um, uh, <clears throat> Kind of like that one there. And so, once again, you're going to set your factors equal to 0. 3x minus 1 equals 0. 6x plus 17 equals 0. And solve them. And uh, you get these numbers as your solutions. Okay? And it's fine to leave them as a fraction. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> so all of these equations here were presented to you in factored form. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, uh, and they all highlight the strength and how nice it is to use the zero product property to solve one of these equations, okay? So very important, very useful little, little tool. But what if the equation that you're trying to solve is not in factored form? What if, you, if it's not written like that? Well, all right, uh, you got to factor it. All right, that's just all there is to it. But you're pretty good at that. You're, you're getting better all the time at factoring quadratics. So we'll try this a couple of times here. Here's some examples um, that I'm going to uh, present here for the rest of this video. There's four of them. All right, and if you'll notice that the last two, number three and number four, um, those are a little bit different, and we're going to factor those in, using a slightly different technique. We're going to use the greatest common factor, the GCF, uh, to factor those. All right, well, let's get busy. Um, there's the first one. All right, you can set up your diamond there with the 12 on top and the 8 on the bottom. And you think for a second, and you come up with 6 and 2 for your numbers on the sides. You write out that left side of the equation as now. x plus 6 times x plus 2 equals 0. And... All right, no problem. You just set those factors equal to zero and you solve and, and there you go. Voila, there's your solutions. X equals negative six and X equals negative two. Pretty easy. Let's try another one. Um, and there we go. There's our, there's our idea about quadratic solution equations always have two solutions. All right. All right. Here's another one. Uh, set your numbers up there in the diamond and figure out what numbers go on the sides and this was a little bit trickier maybe sometimes it's one times negative 10 or one and negative 10 i should say and you factor you write those factors out and you set them equal to zero and you solve and voila there you go there's there's your solutions so solving a quadratic when you have to factor it it's not that much dif more difficult. Let's try a couple other ones, like I mentioned earlier. Here's these other two examples. x squared plus 18x equals 0, and 3x squared minus 21x equals 0. And we're going to factor each of those with the greatest common factor. All right? So in that first one, x squared plus 18x equals 0. If you'll think about that for a second, you'll notice that both of those terms have an x as a factor. The first term is x times x, or x squared. The second one is 18 times x. So x is a factor for each of those terms, and in fact, it is the greatest common factor between those two terms. All right, so when you take the x out of x squared plus 18x, you're left with just x plus 18. Okay, so now in factored form, that equation looks like that. x times x plus 18 equals 0. All right, now it's a piece of cake. Set each factor to 0 and solve. No big deal. All right. The other equation there, 
3x squared minus 21x uh, equals 0. Well, okay, you can see there's a 3 and there's a 21, which is divisible by 3. So 3 is a factor of 21. So the greatest common factor must have a 3 in it, but there's also x's in both of those terms. So that means that 3x is actually the greatest common factor between those two terms, all right? And with practice, this becomes very easy to do. Um, you'll end up with x minus 7 in the parentheses there. All right, and now your factors are 3x and x minus 7. You set them equal to 0 and solve, and voila, there's your solutions. All right. Um, all right, so there's a bunch of examples. The problems that you're going to do in this first assignment are very similar to this. So I hope this video makes your work easier and that you learn something and that you get a little bit more uh, value from your practice. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.